we're going to look at an example of a false proof. This is taken from exercise number 11 in section 3.2 of the second edition of How to Prove It by Daniel Vellman. So the statement that is proved is the following. Suppose that x and y are real numbers and they add up to 10. Then x is not 3 and y is not 8. Well, this statement is clearly false because if I take x equal to 3 and y equal to 7, they add up to 10. And x and y together do not satisfy this conclusion because I have x equal to 3. But let's look at the so-called proof. It is a proof by contradiction. So the way it starts is, suppose that the conclusion is false. So we are assuming that this is not true. Then what must happen is x is 3 and y is 8. But that means x plus y is 11 contradicting the given information that x plus y is 10. So the conclusion must be true. And as I said, this is a false proof because the statement is not true. How is that possible? So something must be wrong with this proof. Well, the problem is not here. If x plus y is indeed 11, then that indeed is a contradiction. So the error did not occur down here. So the error must be up here. And the only thing that we did up here was to write the negation of the conclusion. That means that we must have screwed up writing the negation of the conclusion. Now, what is the negation of this? So remember that the negation reads, it is not true that x is not equal to 3 and y not equal to 8. Now, how do you fail this condition? Well, you fail this condition if either x is 3 or y is 8 or both. So the negation of this is not this, it's not n, but rather or. Because if either of this happens, then this statement is false. So we have made a blunder in formulating the negation of the conclusion. And that is why this is not a valid proof by contradiction. This is actually a very common error. Forming the negation of the conclusion requires some care. And one really needs to be careful manipulating these logical connectives. We'll see more on logical connectives when we talk about propositional logic.